Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the telecom webinar for year 2021. My name is Nandish Marapati, and we have a very interesting um, webinar today. We are also co-hosting this webinar with our partner, uh, Jin Suk at Amdocs. And I'm personally very excited about what he has to talk about for the CPQ solution, specifically focused on the telecom industry. So, but before we get into the specific about the webinar, let's take a quick look at what our agenda looks like. And if I can advance that slide, that is. Um, <laughs> so first of all, we're gonna talk about the, the speakers and, and give a little bit of uh, background about the company. And obviously everybody has heard about COVID-19 and that has had a tremendous impact on all industries. We have done this webinar uh, two weeks ago in the manufacturing industry, last week with the financial industry. And this, this week, we're gonna take a look at that impact on the telecom side. Um, and for everybody or anybody who has had interactions with, uh, with any of the CRM products, you realize that there is a little bit of gap when it comes from proposal management, code management, order fulfillment, and order management. That's where the CPQ solution comes in. So we're very excited to partner with Amdocs to bring that uh, solution into Creatio and fill that massive gap that was previously in there. So along with our local platform, give a complete end-to-end -end solution to the telecom uh, industry. And time permitting, we'll take a couple of uh, Q&A that is posted on our chat window, but uh, let's move on. So first things first, uh, everybody by now knows who I am. My name is Nandish Madapati, and the Enterprise Solution Manager here at Creatio. I have about 20 plus years of work experience spanning across in different industry verticals, whether that be manufacturing uh, or financial industry or telecom industry. For the last couple of years, I've been focused uh, single-mindedly over the low-code process automation uh, and also a full-blown CRM technologies as well. Um, and from a Creatio perspective, uh, we are a true multinational company with offices spread over uh, multiple offices across the globe. Um, and our mantra always has been that we are hyper-focused on producing a top-notch CRM product to our customers. And not just CRM, by extension, I mean low-code business process as well. Uh, and we do that by giving a significant chunk of employees, well over 50%, those are hyper-focused on delivering those top-notch uh, quality products. And that has been recognized by uh, industry analysts, whether that be Gartner or Forrester. So we do show up in the leader quadrant in lead management or Salesforce automation as well. And what is unique is that unlike uh, other CRM vendors which end up buying uh, market solutions, marketing solutions from a marketing perspective or service or, or sales perspective, Creatio has become a market leader organically from ground up, building the solutions from ground up. And that's what makes us very unique uh, in the CRM space as well. Now, moving on with the theme about Creatio is that world is changing. And I don't have to reiterate that this has been uh, said ad nauseum. So world is changing and we better adapt to that. But there was a big shift in 2020. Nobody needs to be reminded of that, right? COVID-19 has had an, a net uh, positives and many times negative impacts on the lives of many, many people and also different industry verticals. We spent a lot of time talking about manufacturing and financial services previously, uh, but this time uh, we're gonna specifically talk about the telecom industry. So when we look at the research that has been done by Deloitte Research, right? Um, basically, what they have said is there are a couple of, they're not making predictions as such as supposed to saying that, hey, these are all the possible outcomes or scenarios that is going to happen post pandemic. Now that we are all in the tail end of that pandemic, uh, there's vaccine out there, there's light at the end of the tunnel, but a couple of things can happen. So Deloitte looked at it and said that, well, good things can happen. So it would be a net positive benefit, economy recovers demand comes right back to what it was. There's going to be people asking for 5G, new, net, new network expansion, new services. Everything is golden, right? Everybody is happy. Everybody is making money. On the other side of the spectrum is the surviving because it could be very weak economy. Uh, maybe the government's changed. We are actually uh, inaugurating a new president. So there, there could be new regulations coming in that could impact the profitability, uh, capital investments. Again, these are all hypotheticals, right? It may happen, may not necessarily happen, but these are on the two end of the spectrum, best case scenario and worst case scenario. And what is interesting is as leaders, as telecom leaders, they all know that they need to be prepared for both of those situations. Where leadership is going to be different is what happens when 
it, it's somewhere in between, right? And that's what Deloitte is talking about as two different distinct scenarios that is in between the best case and the worst case scenario. And they then bucket that into big pipe and cash cow. And big pipe is basically saying that the demand continues to be high, but the economy is having a net negative impact on the purchasing ability. So what that means is they got to do with what they already have, right? Which means that they have to focus on the core products. Uh, whereas on the cash cow, there is going to be just enough re economic recovery for uh, for people to continue to buy more, which means that um, the telecom industries are less incentive to do digital transformation and more incentive to increase the prices, maybe increasing their networking capability, right? So those are two distinct things. So what does that actually mean? So when we uh, dig a little bit deeper on bit pipe versus cash cows, from a customer experience perspective or from a technological perspective, BitPi simply means that they have to work with what they got. They are going after existing customers. So that means they have to be hyper-focused on making a differentiation in the customer service, which would be all about customer experience. And then they need to automate as much as possible to cut down on those costs to continue to maintain that profitability. What that is means is that when it comes to the BitPi situation, Com telecom companies have to be hyper focused on digital transformation rather than focusing on capital costs like network expansions and so on and so forth which is actually good news for us for people like us who are on the crm side which means that this is where we can actually help telecom companies overcome those challenges of course on the cash cow side it's all about expanding networks people continue to buy more which means that they are expecting faster speeds which means that uh, what the speed, uh, what the money would go to digital transformation is instead diverted towards networks, which means that they have less money to do digital transformation, which is great right now because cash cows, which means that they're going to make lots of money currently, but in two to three years down the line, they're going to be falling behind um, from, a, from a technological perspective. Uh, and we all know what can happen. So they are basically punting the digital transformation uh, down the road. That's basically what's happening. But Irrespective of what is happening, whether it's BitPipe or cash cows, the, the basic drivers in terms of where the industry is moving towards to, obviously outside of, of all the digitalization, is, is the fact that AI is becoming big, right? With AI, obviously you need a lot of data for to make AI predictions. Of course, you need data and not just data. You need to make that data and make some knowledge out of it. For that, you need some analytics, big analytics on top of that, right? IoT is something that we have talked extensively uh, in the manufacturing side from a predictive maintenance perspective, also from a man, uh, financial services side where I talked about automations or, or ATM machines going down um, and therefore they're all coming back into the telecom industry, right? And especially with COVID-19, remote learning has become, uh, has taken off. People are doing more Zoom meetings, more WebExes. So that means they're gonna spend more on those things, right? It's all about cutting down costs, cloud computing, 5G, RPA, security, everything is, is, is basically driving the growth in telecom industry. So they have to balance out that network expansion, the latest, greatest 5G, 6G technology that is gonna come through in the future and also make sure that they're continuing to do digital transformation on top of that. So with all of that growth drivers that is happening, we, we can make a deduction that whether it is a best case scenario or a worst case scenario or a bit pipe or, um, or cash cow, irrespective of what that is, ultimately it comes down to making efficiency gains, it's all about cutting costs and things like that. And that's where Creatio in tandem with our partners at Amdocs can make a difference. So we all know that from a creation perspective, from a product offering perspective, we do sales, we do marketing, we do service, and all of that is uh, foundation based is, is our studio platform with strong business process management engine and also low core technology, right? So that is basically where we are going and we can go into places that is traditionally uh, not been um, uh, walked on previously by other CRM vendors. And we can supplement that all of that with our strong marketplace offerings where we can extend our CRM solutions into other areas as well, including many email templates and uh, business process templates as well. So we are good on that. But when you start taking creation and start applying it into to the telecom life cycle of a customer, when you start breaking it out, typically what's gonna happen is whenever a new product comes in, whether that be 5G or 6G or an iPhone or whatever that may be, 
eventually there is somebody out there defining a new set of products that they want to introduce into the market using their product catalog which is where amdocs comes in and helps us out with that and then then from a crm perspective we can work in tandem with them and then create marketing campaigns using creatius marketing solution and that is going to create a lot of leads to the company itself and from leads you then obviously whether it's b2b or uh, other other places you need to create a quote right and in historically for people who have used creatio you do realize that there's an order management there's a product catalog and all of that but telecom industry products are much much more complex their contracts are much much more complex as well because think about uh, selling telecom products to the likes of walmart or amazon uh, you know, it's IoT, it's wireless, wireless plan, um, uh, fleet management. There's so many things that can go on, so many complex situations that you need a very dedicated solution to in order to fulfill that code, code process, billing process, order fulfillment, order management, all of that. So when you look at it from a lead to care process, Creatio can do the lead to code and then call in Amdocs as needed. And then when it goes to a completed order to cash, and then from cash it goes to care, where we are coming back to uh, Creatio to do enable uh, customer service. And once you provide a best customer experience, now you have the ability to provide upsell and cross-sell opportunities to your customers to continue to offer them new products. So this endless cycle will continue to uh, go and you can continue to grow your business irrespective of what pandemic is going to throw at you. And that's how Creatio in tandem with Amdocs is going to take this experience for telecom and make it even better than what is already in the market. So um, uh, from a, a CRM side, you already know that we can we can handle customer 360. We can use uh, our low code CRM to in order to facilitate order management, forecasting, service management, marketing campaigns, and so on and so forth. So, but for today's um, uh, particular webinar, we're going to be hyper focused on CPQ and focus on that gap that currently exists in, in Creatio and how working in tandem with Amdocs, we're going to fix that. So, in order to talk about that, I'm going to invite Jin Suk from Amdocs um, to give introduction and walk us through the rest of the webinar. Jin, over to you. Hey, thanks, Sandish. Uh, hopefully, everybody can hear me well here. Uh, so my name is Jin, and again, I have over 20 years of the telco experience in various disciplines, such as solution architecture, product management, and marketing, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, my background, again, being a telecom guy, been, uh, being an expert in the BSS, OSS, and recently more on the network side as well. So again, currently my role in the MDOC is I'm leading the uh, B2B and enterprise solution for the global telco uh, out there. So with that, can you go to the next slide, Landish? Again, those of you who doesn't know MDOCs, MDOC is a market leader in the telco industry when it comes to the providing the enablement platform. We're talking about BSS, OSS, and some of the network solution we all do, right? We provide a solution uh, to enable that as well as a service. And then we have a more than uh, 350 uh, service provider customer uh, over 85 countries all over the globe. So we have more than 4.2 billion revenue in uh, last year. So we are basically, uh, we consider ourselves as a market leader in the telco industry when it comes down to the end-to-end uh, the -end, uh, solution enablement platform for the telco. So go, please go to next slide. So uh, without any further ado, what, what I like to do uh, as part of this webinar is that I, I like to actually show right the real uh, the product innovation between the uh, creation and our uh, CPQ capability. Uh, again, uh, and this already mentioned regarding this the lead to care process. And by the way, I'm I'm gonna specifically focusing on the B2B side of the. Uh, lead to care process which is much much more complex than uh, traditional consumer side of the use case uh, for this particular uh, demonstration what i like to do is i like to cover all three domains like uh, mobile business line and uh, iot and the wireline and then uh, demonstrate you how 
uh, different persona from the telecom, such as a sales manager who's responsible to handling the account for B2B customer versus the, some of the operation guys can uh, handle the what would be the post contract process as well as how customer service rep can actually perform the uh, what we call the service lifecycle management uh, regarding the existing uh, product instances or mobile subscription for the company, how they can actually provide the additional ordering activity on top of that. So those are the uh, sort of the uh, scenario I like to show. And like I said, without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and share my screen. Please give me the control about sharing so I can go right into the demo. All right. We can see the screen, Jen. Thank you. All right. So, so what you see here is the uh, creation uh, uh, page with the opportunity, right? Again, uh, uh, assuming that uh, some of you guys already are familiar with the creation or typical CRM process regarding the lead to opportunity management. So that once the lead being generated and then opportunity is being qualified, now, as you can clearly see on the top here, now we are at the proposal generation stage. This is where that our CPQ comes in, right? So now there's a nice uh, task being shown as you now uh, build a proposal using the CPQ. So this is where we're gonna actually start from. And then, of course, I can actually create the brand new uh, proposal uh, through this particular link here, but uh, due to the time limitation, I actually kind of start the process by creating the uh, the proposal for this particular opportunity right below here. So I can actually click here and then I can edit it. This will actually provide you the integration between the creation and Endox CPQ uh, solution. As you can see, right, it is a very seamlessly integrated from the UI perspective. The integration is not just the UI, it is a, a, a data integration as well. So basically what you see outside of the frame here is the still the creation, right? And then what's inside here is the end up. Uh, CPQ. And as you can see, you have a alpha trucking company, which is the same customer that opportunity has been created for. It's now we, uh, me as a salesperson is already working on the, this particular proposal for that given opportunity, right? So uh, from here, what I can do is I can actually go right into the, let's take a look at the, what I have done so far, right? I have in this particular proposal, I'm still uh, already in process of creating the code, right? I have a business internet, right? Which is the uh, simple connectivity solution for the, let's say, uh, different offices, right? And then there's an IPVPN site. This is the more complex, uh, the connectivity, uh, the solution for like a private networking between the different offices and so on and so forth, right? So I have include these two product already. And then let's take a look at the, uh, the business internet by clicking here. I already assigned this particular uh, business internet product into the two uh, location, Albany branch office and Detroit branch offices, right? And of course I can actually assign to the additional customer site, but I won't do that for now. And uh, what I'll do is, uh, uh, since I already assigned the two single site to the two site to the business internet, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, assign the more complex uh, uh, private uh, IPVPN connectivity to the rest of the site. So by doing that, I can just select, right, for the regional office of the Chicago and then uh, Cleveland and then Columbus, Ohio headquarters. I'm gonna go ahead and give them the IPVPN site access again. I'm still building the proposal, right? So once uh, that is done, what I like to do next is that basically I like to go and uh, add the additional product into this uh, uh, proposal by, uh, by going to the additional offer. And then now we have uh, this product catalog being displayed here. Again, I'm not gonna demonstrate you the actual product catalog, how these all these uh, telco specific product offering being created, but obviously MDOX has a product catalog offering that basically driving the oldest uh, product offering during the design time. 
and then publish it to the uh, runtime application like a CPQ, right? Uh, so at this point, what I like to do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the, add the business mobile 25. This is a, a mobility product for the employee for their company. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then I'm gonna go look for the, uh, some sort of the IoT solution, fleet management solution. There's a fleet tracker solution. This is a basically IoT type of the solution that I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the proposal as well. So once I add it in, now uh, not only business internet and the existing I IPBPN, now I have added a couple more uh, product offering into this proposal, right? And let me just configure the quickly configure the fleet tracker solution, right? Since this is the combination of the actual device that are typically going into the truck or you know vehicle that to provide the uh, connectivity. So, and then uh, basically it contains a, the connectivity portion as well as the actual device portion. Let's say like, I wanna actually have this uh, maximum 40 uh, device uh, uh, available for this particular solution for this customer. So now you can see that uh, the, now the flip tracker has a quantity of the 40, and then you can see the, monthly total and then a one-time total get reflected as well. I'm gonna do a little bit uh, interesting thing in the uh, mobile mobility side, right? This is the uh, situation where that, uh, let's say service provider is selling the uh, corporate mobile plan to the, uh, the B2B customer for their employee, right? So it's basically uh, the employer sponsor mobile plan, right? So. So there's a two type of employee, let's say regular employee versus manager. So I'm gonna actually tailor different type of the offering for one for geared to the employee versus the one for uh, manager. So what I like to do as a first step is I'm gonna go ahead and change this, the uh, uh, rename this particular template for this is for the employee, let's say. And then I, I can say, okay, maximum count that uh, as part of this contract, we can go up to the 40, right? And then what I like to do is I like to actually uh, go ahead and go back to the product catalog and then add another instance of the same product offering again into the, uh, the proposal. And then I'm gonna rename this as a, this time for manager. So this is the template uh, that I'm building within in this proposal for the manager, right? For since this is a manager plan, uh, what I like to do is I'm, I like to actually go ahead and do the configuration of that. And then uh, since it's the manager plan, let's say like a, a manager need to uh, make a call to the international and then roaming. So what I like to do is I like to actually enable those type of the feature as part of the, this particular uh, offer, right? So the regular employee, they don't get to call internationally, but let's say uh, the, the, for manager, they can make an international call, right? So that's the scenario. So once I uh, do that, so I can say, okay, this guy can actually uh, roam across the different uh, region within the USA and then call the Asia as well. So, and as you can see, once I start updating this thing, the pricing get reflected. So it was a 35, now it's a $52 per line. So I'm, I'm good with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, uh, save that, right? And then quickly go back to the uh, where I came from. So now you can see that now we got business in the net for two single side. And then uh, for the regular employee business mobile for 40 quantity, with a regular price. And then for the manager, I got, I have not set the quantity yet. Let's say like a maximum quantity is a 10 for this case. I'll do that. So now I got the business mobile for manager for 10, right? And I got fleet tracker, IoT product for 40. And then BPN is a three single site out there. Okay, so last step I like to do is to quickly give some discount for the manager plan. So I can actually do the price override. So again, for individual line is a $52 monthly, but I'm gonna go ahead and give them about 5% uh, discounts to make it 40, 49. So once I uh, 
clear that, refresh the state, then now you can see the uh, price being reflected as well. So you can see the nice total of the monthly charge and the, the one-time charge showing up. And then you can kind of see the type of the discount that I gave to the uh, different offering at this stage. So what I like to do at this stage is that uh, uh, I'm gonna actually show you a couple of things, right? Let's say like you uh, finalize this code and then uh, now you wanna actually present it to the customer. Before you wanna present it to the customer, you wanna actually uh, the internally approve this particular code. So you, I wanna actually start finalizing this. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and send it to the internal approval. Please approve, right? Still, I'm within the my CPQ, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and request approval, and then it will come back immediately. Say, well, okay, this is successful. So this is the one integration, additional integration point with the creation. So once I close this particular uh, the 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 proposal, going back to the creation opportunity page. Now there are a couple of things happening, right? You got this uh, uh, the proposal being updated with the um, a monthly charge and the one-time charge, and then status got updated. But also more importantly, if you look at the top chevron here, it used to be proposal stage, now automatically moved to the contracting stage, right? Because we are part of the internal approval stage, and then now we are ready to prepare the contract, right? So again, as part of the CPQ going from the one stage to the other, we actually uh, move the corresponding opportunity stage to the one, one stage to the another so that you can actually initiate the different tasks within the CRM side. I think that's the, something that I like to show you. And then uh, another thing I can show you is I can, let me just go back to the, the actual proposal right that we were working on so this is the basically uh the where i kind of left it off and from here what uh there one thing i can do is i like to actually check the uh kind of probability of this pro proposal right typically uh this is uh, a very typical in the telco for the b2b business right since we're dealing with the larger amount of the you know the recurring charge uh the recurring revenue right for many uh, duration during the duration of the contract cycle. So it, it will be nice to have uh, some view of the PNL. So as part of the our CPQ product, we can actually generate the PNL view based on the all the product uh, included as part of this proposal as part of this proposal process, right? So it this this takes a little while, but uh, I'll show you the what that will looks like in a moment. But uh, Again, this is the, one of the key features that we have is that it's not after you signing the deal that you find out the well the prob uh, the uh, probability of this deal is not too good, right? You can actually evaluate this as part of this uh, approval process and saying, right, okay, here is the uh, the three year contract, and then here is the zero uh, the year one, year two, year three summary, and then there's a revenue portion, and then there's a cost portion, and so on and so forth. And then there are different KPI you can actually do. Not only so, you can actually do the some sort of the PL what if simulation, right? So you can actually go to the simulation mode, and then you can change a different type of the parameter here too find out what would be the optimal point of this particular deal as well. Okay? Jane, if I may, if, if I may add in here, I think this, this is phenomenal, right? Uh, <clears throat> I've used other CPQ solutions in the past, and the best thing that you can do is basically export that data and do these P&L simulations in Microsoft Excel. And that kind of defeats that <laughs> purpose of uh, having another application to do just one calculations just to see that internal rate of return, the net present value, gross margin information at your fingertips. This is amazing. Uh, yeah. And to have multiple proposals and to see different gross margin and give the best one that makes the most sense for the company. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Feature. Yeah, it's, it's all about the, you know, you try to find out about your deal before customer sign, right? And then mm -hmm. make a customer happy at the end, right? You don't want to, mm -hmm. and then and you, you want to make a both the, uh, yourself and the customer happy with this particular deal, right? So you want to, it is extremely important to find out what will be the optimal 
point of the profitability so that they uh, the operator can win the deal as uh, as you uh, um, as well as a customer make a customer experience great as well okay so from here, uh, uh, the, at this point, what I like to do is I like to uh, sort of the finalize this by go here. And then one other thing before I uh, finalizing is so showing the uh, document generation. So now this is ready to be presented to the customer. So we're going to go ahead and generate the document. Again, we have a native uh, capability of the generating the document. Oops. Uh, so this one uh, seems like it's down, but uh, basically it actually goes to the uh, document generation system, such as, uh, you know, DocuSign and those kinds of things, right? So that basically we send all this information back to those systems so they can actually obtain the e-signature from the customer, right? And then once the e-signature arrive, then I can actually say, okay, this particular proposal is now marked as a sign, right? So once this process happened, right? So now proposal is becomes an agreement, right? That means that now it is a signed contract. So if I actually go back and close this, right? And then go back to the, the opportunity again, uh, there should be a few things happening here, right? First of all, uh, this particular, uh, the status now is a, that since the customer signed the deal, it's uh, considered as a close and one, right? And then uh, there's a task saying that, well, send, sending, uh, send the customer the welcome package, right? And then and if you look at the proposal side, uh, the, the, the status being uh, updated to the signed, and then this uh, contract within the CRM is automatically generated, right? I think this is the way the really nice thing about the, this integration is that once you're done with the CPQ process, now seamlessly handing over to the CRM process. So you can actually manage the contract uh, post signing from CRM side of the thing. So if I actually click here, then it will actually go to the natives uh, create your CRM page where that I can actually see the different information, right? Sign date is today, and then it's a three year contract, right? And then you can even see some of the contract detail. Remember, like uh, these are the product offer that I actually included as part of the contract, right? We got the maximum 10 line of the uh, manager business mobile, 40 line of the uh, employee business mobile. And in terms of the uh, IoT solution, we got 20 max count quantity corresponding unit monthly charge and unit one-time charge being correctly displayed. And then in terms of the wireline product perspective, IP VPN site and business internet, remember there's a two location for the business internet, three location for the IP VPN site. All those information is seamlessly flown from the CPQ system into the CRM system, right? And then from the CRM side, now you can take it over and then do the uh, next step, which is the additional uh, order entry so that uh, uh, the CRM can actually send this uh, information for the fulfillment uh, if needed, right? So that's the step that I'm gonna actually show you next is that uh, from here, right? I can actually go back to the, let's say, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and look, look for the, uh, this particular customer that we are dealing with. Uh, this is the customer Alpha Trucking Company, right? Uh, this is the dashboard of the Alpha Trucking Company. As you can see, uh, there are different uh, the, the, the analytics, like a marketing-related analytic dashboard showing up. But now you can see that there are many different places I can go, right? As part of the account information, you can clearly see this particular customer has a five location. Remember, like I assigned the, some of these location for the IPVPN and the business internet, right? All those location information is being masked within the CRM system, okay? And from there, I can see the, what is the current contract? We just signed this particular contract, right? Now you can see the mobile IoT wireline agreement that we just pulled together within the CPQ process, now being associated with this customer in the CRM, right? And then, in addition to that, there is a 
bunch of the order already generated based on that contract, right? So uh, let me try to explain here, right? Why these order being generated automatically? There is a no order for the uh, mobile or IoT yet. I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up later, but the, these are the all the, uh, the location service, right? That already as a part of the contract we identify, right? For example, Columbus headquarters, we want the, uh, some sort of IP VPN solution where that uh, you know, branch office we want the business internet, right? So CRM recognize that and then automatically generate those orders based on the, uh, the contract that being sent out uh, from the, uh, the CPQ system. So let's take a look at the one of this order, right? Saying, uh, let's say I want to actually take a look at the uh, Columbus uh, headquarter order, right? So if you can look at that, so this one, okay, so product is IPVPN site quantity is one and there's a you know, monthly charge and the recurring charge is showing up. And then this is a part of this particular contract. And then type of the order is the adding the wildline type of the product. Okay, mm -hmm. so this, uh, and then you can see here, there is uh, uh, the, the relevant task being generated for this particular order. So next step will be the gather uh, necessary order detail and then scheduling the installation is those are the necessary information mm -hmm. and using the native CRM capability of the configuring this particular page we can actually specify like uh, such as uh, all the detail that you need to uh, capture here is that well you need to schedule the initial customer call and then you want to actually uh, the reserve the actual network circuit ID and then maybe you need to uh, set up the installation uh, date with the customer, right? So these are the type of the example that you need to actually capture before you send it up to the fulfillment system to the actually fulfill this particular order, okay? So from here, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and uh, close this thing up, right? And then I like to show you how I would actually create the, let's say one of the mobile order, right? So basically remember like uh, the, for the, uh, the mobile order, I have not actually create the order yet. So as part of the contract, we specify for the employee, we have a 40 maximum 40 line and then manager maximum 10 line. Now I can actually start creating the order and for the uh, based on that contract for example, right? From here, I can say, okay, I'm, now I'm creating the uh, mobile, employee mobile order, right? Uh, let's say customer due date is the, uh, the, the 23rd. And then I like to actually look for the contract product that is um, eligible based on that. So I let, let me look at that. And there is, a, these are all the contracted product that uh, is uh, eligible for the ordering at this point based on the current contract. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the business mobile for the employee. And then even though maximum is uh, 40, but I want to actually activate the uh, first 10 employee subscribe, let's say. There. So you now you have uh, included in this particular order right this contracted product and then quantity is 10 and then again uh, monthly and the one-time unit charge and what i like to do here is that uh, uh, what i like to do is i like to actually set it up such that uh, i can uh, uh, import the, some of the uh, 10 subscriber information from the spreadsheet right so that that's what i'm going to show you next is that because in order to process this order, right, you need to have uh, some of the subscriber detail and their current uh, the, the mobile line information, if whether they wanna bring their own devices versus they wanna purchase new devices versus the, they wanna keep the telephone number versus that they wanna assign the new telephone number. There are a whole bunch of the information that uh, is required in order to fulfill this particular order. So instead of the doing it by one at a time what i like to show you is the showing the uh, uh bulk in, uh, importing process basically so that uh, using that uh we can actually import right uh the 
the, the, through the spreadsheet, for example. So I'm actually bringing in the spreadsheet. And then uh, what, what I need to do here is to just to make a one modification to this spreadsheet, saying that I'm going to actually read the, for this order. Uh, I need to actually put the correct order number. So quickly check this uh, 143. So let me just do 143. So replace all. Okay. So save that and close that. All right. So let me uh, go ahead and start that process since now spreadsheet is ready. So I'm going to go ahead and click data import, right? I'm going to actually uh, eventually drag and drop that particular spreadsheet into uh, this data import process, right? I'm importing the subscription here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, the drag and drop that particular uh, spreadsheet that I just showed you with all those information of the 10 line and then click next. So <clears throat> Jin, while this loads up, is this, is this where the employees are bringing their own devices and you're using that too. Yeah, some some they do, some they don't. So I'll show you exactly what that will looks like once the import process is done, right? So once, uh, uh, just to give a moment, right? I'm uh, importing it as we're speaking. So it's a bit slow here. There you go. Close. And then once I refresh that, yeah, here. So now you can see I import the 10 uh, subscriber, employee subscriber, right? And then uh, it has a, a billing account. So uh, within the company, right, which account is uh, responsible for the billing discharge, right? And there's a bring your own device, uh, the, the flag, right? Some of them is yes and some of them is no. Telephone number ported requirement, right? It's a yes and no, right? Of course, I can actually double click this, any of these things to see the detail, right? So you can see the some of the more detail here and then some of the subscriber information in this case that this person is wanna keep their uh, device and then that means that they need to provide the, some of the device information, the SIM card information so we can actually activate that device with a new plan, right? So so here, here it is, right? And then, once you import this uh, whole thing, right? Next step would be basically you uh, go through the process. So now I get the order details that is uh, complete. I'm gonna go ahead and complete this particular task, right? Within the CRM. Right. And then uh, it, uh, even though it says also, oh, okay, I go ahead and approve the require. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve that. Now I'm ready to submit the order, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and submit to the uh, fulfillment. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete this task. By doing that, the, the this particular order is now in progress state, right? Once it reached the progress state, right? Then now fulfillment system is to start fulfilling the order, right? So from the CRM perspective, you should be able to check the status, right? So you can see that now there is your order being already validated, fulfillment is the started, and then sim shipment is happening as we're speaking, right? So these are the simulated events that we're showing you, obviously. And then once everything is done, right, the fulfillment system will auto automatically notify back to the CRM system uh, such that this particular order is now complete. So let me just uh, simulate that by just uh, manually complete this thing, right? So this order is now completed, right? So you can see that uh, now, uh, so uh, next task is performing the customer follow-up, right? Uh, really nice thing about, uh, next thing I wanna show you here is that from here, right, once the order is complete, now let me go back to the customer 360 view, right? And then if you uh, look at the, uh, the subscription tab here, right? All those subscription that all 10 of them is now in the active status, okay? And then, all the related information is being displayed. Some of those that uh, 
did not put the number. Number has been assigned, right? And then uh, you can obviously be go detail and look at the more uh, information, and such as like a number didn't get ported, so that's why it's empty. Uh, bring your own devices, so uh, device information is all present. So basically, what you see in here is that what we call the uh, the active subscription for this particular customer uh, for this uh, operator, right? So from here, uh, what typically do is as part of the customer service uh, management perspective, now I can uh, do the additional activity saying that, let's say Rachel Johnson, uh, three months later got terminated, right? And I need to actually disconnect this particular line. What do we need to do? What we need to do is uh, simply go back to uh, this particular offer, uh, order tab, and then start generating this type of the different type of order. Let's say like, I wanna actually create the disconnect order, right? And who do you wanna disconnect? Okay, I wanna actually look up the subscription here, okay? So remember we had a 10 active subscription out there. So the, it is the different number. So I say, I'm gonna actually disconnect this, this number. And then basically what I'm doing here is that I'm actually creating the disconnect type of the order for this active subscriber, which is Rachel Johnson. Okay, and then I'm not gonna repeat the same process, but it's a, basically you basically process the ordering and then send it to the fulfillment, then this particular subscription will get disconnected. So Jin, Jin was this the MACD that you were talking yes. about? Mm -hmm. Yes, this is one of the uh, the kind of holy grail of the, the BSS <laughs> system is that in the telco is that, you know, a lot of the provider, uh, solution provider, you know, demonstrating the, you know, what new activation process, but, you know, the really how you actually managing the existing customer with the different, uh, not only the subscription in case of the wild line, we call the product instances, right? IPVPN mm -hmm. and business demand. What if you want to disconnect a certain location? How you handle that? How you going to upgrade from the bandwidth XYZ to the one, two, three, right? How mm -hmm. you do that? There are many different type of the customer service activity that you need to perform as part of the, this a single view interface, right? CRM mm -hmm. interface. And then just, uh, uh, under, uh, underneath the uh, below, right, there is a uh, MDOX ordering that uh, providing all the necessary business service to the microservice to CRM system so that we can actually make sure that all the activity that we are doing uh, through the CRM UI is uh, validated against the backend logic of the MDOX CPQ, MDOX ordering, and so on and so forth. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think. Uh, this is the uh, enough for the demo, and if we, we can actually, uh, Nandish, if you wanna take over the uh, sharing, and then just, uh, um, I think I have just one more slide to uh, wrap it up. Yeah, we gotta go back to the slides and the last slide. Give me a second. Yeah, if, yeah, if you can just go to the next slide, uh, that one. Yeah. One more. Yeah. yeah, one more. There you go. There you go. So basically what you saw is that from the MDOX perspective, we have a solution called the MDOX Enterprise Accelerator. And then we, what I demonstrate to you is the CPQ portion and the auto management portion, right? And then when it comes to the auto management, you already see the CPQ, right? Auto management side, there are two type of the channel, right? I haven't, I didn't show you the self-service channel, but the assisted channel through the creation CRM system, right? We actually showed the how auto capture uh, the process being typically handled by the telco operator. But behind the scene, there is a MDOX ordering application fueling all the necessary business logic and validation so that make sure that this auto captures process is correctly handled by the CRM system. And then once uh, submitted, I haven't showed the order handling process. This is the fulfillment process, basically, that we have an uh, end-to-end CPQ order capture and order handling all pre-integrated 
which are all built on the top of the latest and greatest modern digital architecture, such as microservices and you know the DevOps and cloud base and Horizon and so on and so forth, right? So it's a fully integrated. Yet, if somebody just needs a CPQ portion and then working with the rest of the system, we can do it modular as well. Okay, so. I think uh, that's the wrap for my side. So maybe we can do the, some Q and A. Sure. I think the next slide is the Q and A, and let me see the chat. I see two questions. I think I can take the first one, and I'll send the next one to you, Jen. So the first question is how to ensure positive experience both pre-sale and post-sale in the telecom sales cycle. So I'll take this one uh, because it's more CRM related. So from my side, I would say a couple of buzzwords that come about, right? So omni-channel is a new buzzword that comes over and over again. Customer 360 matters, business process and automation. So if you, if you remember those four buzzwords, I think that is pretty much encapsulating everything about pre-sales and post-sales, at least from a telecom side. And here is the reason why. As, as Jin was talking about um, order fulfillment, order management. Then he went into the care side and he was saying, well, what happens if Rachel was being terminated? What happens there? That would be an after sales, post care activities. And then you can see that from a creation perspective, looking at it from an account side, easily being able to go into that subscription, identifying that person who needs to be terminated and then have that visibility to see what kind of devices, did she bring her own device, is she using a device that the company gave her, and then being able to go step-by-step step from a business process perspective uh, from, a, uh, from a Chevron, identifying different steps, and then being able to easily terminate them that is also wonderful. That is that is a good one. And also these days people are reaching out on omni-channel, right? Chats and chatbots are picking up. People want to communicate on WhatsApp. So from a pre-sales perspective, if you can reach people out on multiple channels, Facebook, social media, um, WhatsApp, email, phone calls, whatever that may be. And then from a post-sales perspective, also if you're able to service them and then irrespective of what is going on, if you give, you, uh, give your agents, a seamless process to give them a step-by-step -step process on give the best experiences, it's going to get wonderful, right? And we have lots and lots of those data points to back it up, not only on the telecom industry side, but virtually from all industry verticals. Um, moving on to the next question, uh, Jin, this is probably, you better answer this, which is, who has to be the driving force of technology changes in telco business? Well, uh, I, I guess I can kind of interpret that question in two different ways, right? Uh, from the internal telco organization perspective and as well as uh, the customer perspective. Uh, so based on the, my uh, dealing with the many global telcos out there, I think that both aspect is very important, right? Internally, right? It is no longer IT department of the telco driving this type of the, uh, the transformation, but uh, the, it's all being driven by the business side, right? So that, you know, the, the, those who are dealing with, in my example earlier, right? In the case of the B2B, right? The, the, uh, the enterprise business unit of the telco is driving a lot of changes within the telco to transform the process okay so that uh, that uh, like i said like uh, the, the 10 years ago a lot of those changes pretty much driven by the it organization but now that's changing but more importantly customer is now demanding it and uh, the entire market trend in the next five year with the uh, introduction of the 5G as a new uh, the connectivity means that can not only revolutionize the, uh, the consumer industry, but more importantly on the enterprise side, we expect a whole bunch of the uh, dig digital transformation that happening on the B2B customer side that requires the the help from the telcos, right? That that uh, kind of enforcing them to telco to modernize their the stack as well, right? So again, and the the 
to answer the question, it's all over the world, right? It's like uh, it's uh, within the internally business mm -hmm. uh, side of the house is driving the change. Externally, customer demand is now happening, not only consumer side, but now will happen on the enterprise side as well. Right. I agree with you, Jen. And I think it, it uh, dovetails very nicely into the slides that we are talking about, right? So when Deloitte did the research, it's all about what the customers want, how are they going to react to it, and then how do business leaders inside the organization react to what the customer demands are? I think you're spot on. So Jen, I think uh, we, we should probably wrap up right now. We have about five minutes left. So uh, there are a few more questions, but I think uh, we'll wrap it up right now. So once again, thank you so much, Jen. I think this was wonderful. I'm very personally excited by that seamless integration between Amdocs CPQ and Creatio, just to see that when you do some things in, in CPQ, how business processes kicked off in the background, the probability of the opportunities updated, the stages are updated, orders are created. It is very seamless to see that. Uh, I think we have a very seamless end-to-end -end solution all the way from product introduction, all the way to care and upsell, cross-sell subsequent to that. Uh, looking forward to working with you on many more opportunities just like we did last week. Uh, but thank you once again uh, for hosting this webinar. I think this was very inform informative for me and for the rest of the team as well. Thank you so much. Hey, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone.